Hi, just wanted to do a quick rant about this piece of utter junk that a uh, customer I uh, bought recently. We've got a project where we need 10 high-speed DIRS 485 port for a big installation and I was looking for a 4 port um, isolated 485 interface to use for it. Uh, we found this one, it's about £130. Um, on the face it looks quite nice, nice little metal box, mounting holes, um, plug-in terminal blocks for the um, 5 interface, this does 232 as well, I'm not interested in that. Um, and it's got a power jack as well as a terminal block input. But the first thing I noticed, the 485 ports, there's no ground connection. Now some 485 receivers can work on a two, in two-wire mode, but a lot won't work properly because the, um, the ground reference is floating all over the place. So let's take a look inside. Now again, on first Viewing it looks quite nice. You've got all these transient suppressors, uh, polyfuses to protect the transient suppressor. All looks quite good, but the day sheet says this has got 3 kV isolation. Now, if you look at this, we've got the DC to DC converters to take power over the isolation barrier. We've got this cut in the track in the uh, ground plane, but then look, tracks going right across it, and the actual opto isolators here and here. There's no track break at all across them. So, you know, I don't know what planet they are on where they get 3 kV isolation off this track gap, but it certainly isn't this one. Absolute junk. The other thing they've done is they've left off the E squared prom that lets you configure some of the options on the um, FT4232 uh, chip. This is an FTDI um, USB high speed quad UART chip. It was actually quite a nice chip. Um, but because they've left this E squared prom off, which is maybe like, I don't know, 10, 20 p's worth of parts, it really restricts what you can do with it because um, one of the reasons you, you want that is to have an ser individual serial number for each device so that when you've got several of them connected to the PC your software can know which one it's talking to. Without it they all look the same. Um, you may be able to select it by which USB port it's plugged into but it's really not ideal. But the other thing that allows you to do is set up um, non-conventional board rates uh, if you're using the COM port interface. There's a whole application notes on the FTDR website, I won't go into the details here. But basically for the sake of um, a few pennies worth of components, they made it a lot less flexible. One thing I did notice, um, the PCB is actually tracked to include the ground connection on the 485 port, so for some reason they've just fitted these 4-pin connectors instead of the 5-pins that they should have been. What we're looking at here is a single byte at 9600 board sending a 55 hex uh, value, which is alternate ones and zero bits. The top trace is the output from the UART chip, so this is basically what the um, signal should look like. These are the um, data plus and data minus signals um, coming out of the RS485 transceiver. This is the subtraction of these two, so this is what should come out of a 485 receiver at the other end of the line. This is the data enable on the 485 receiver and what we should really be seeing here is a high for the whole length of the byte but what they seem to be doing is actually enabling it on a, a, a bit at a time. Now a 9600 board this sort of doesn't, doesn't look too bad, it looks reasonable but if we actually look at the edge we actually see there's quite a delay and um, we've got about uh, two microseconds delay between where the data should be transitioning when it actually is. Now this is actually spec'd to, to go up to 230k bits, so let's take a look at what the waveform looks like at 230k bits. Right, this is the um, same 55 hex value, but now it's being sent at um, 23400k bits. And as you can see, the waveforms are basically pretty horrific. I mean, the actual width of the pulse is probably maybe 40% out, and the chance of that you know, being, a, uh, being a really decent, reliable, receivable signal at the other end is pretty remote. But it actually gets better than that. 485 networks tend to have termination on them, resistor termination. So let's connect 120 ohm termination across this 485 um, transmitter and see what happen happens. Oh dear, we've got... I've no idea what's going on here. We've got this double bump. I suspect that maybe to do with the um, driver turning off. But, I mean, that's what the data should look like and that's what it actually effectively does look like. Not good. So, why is this thing such a piece of junk? Basically, I think penny pinching. The whole TX enable stuff, I think, was probably to save on opto isolators. They'd also have needed to fit that E squared prom to get the TXN functionality on that FT4232. Uh, um, yeah, maybe if you're running it at 9600 board, it might just about be usable, um, if, as long as your other end doesn't mind not having a ground reference, which may or may not work. 
Um, the other thing I really don't like is they try to do this automatic switching. It says it'll automatically figure out whether you want to use 232, 485, 422. Now, I don't want that. I don't want this box to try and figure that out. I want to set a dip switch, I want to set a link, because if I want a 485 port, it's always going to be a 485 port. And trying to do that sort of thing automatically is always going to come unstuck in some situation. Give me dip switches, give me links, I, I know what I'm doing, I want to set this thing up properly. Um, and the general moral is, you know, don't believe specifications. If you want to run stuff, particularly if you want to run it fast, you need performance, get the thing, test it, check everything on the scope, make sure it's actually going to work. Because the worst thing is to buy a load of these, put in an installation, then be chasing around the whole building, trying to figure out what the hell's going wrong, for the sake of you know, a bit of penny pinching on a piece of junk equipment. Always test stuff. Always.